Good morning, folks. We're starting with the Soho Lasco C3 Coronagraph. You're going to see a sun diving comet heading in towards the sun, and this is a fantastic way to begin its last day of existence. We're off to spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun with two eruptions, center and then top left at the active region we said wasn't done yet. The first was a plasma filament, the second a C-class solar flare-driven CME. They are beautiful to watch on these SDO images, especially when you can see the plasma erupting. Up next, we're going to look at these from Stereo A. A few months behind in orbit and able to see Earth-directed CMEs from the side. First one is heading at Earth off to the right of the screen. Second one likely is not. And so as we come to Soho again, we find really only one of the eruptions visible in a great way. The second one off the sunspot group. Folks, we saw that first one heading at Earth on stereo, but where is it on SOHO? It's behind the blocking disk. It is a tight eruption heading directly at our planet. As the endless spiral accurately shows, both those eruptions are coming off the sun there pretty much at the same time. First one going to impact Earth. And while it is a direct shot at our planet, it's not big enough to be scary. It is expected to produce geomagnetic storms, strong aurora, and perhaps even minor electrical issues. Eyes on the sun? She might not be done. By the way, we took the heliosphere current sheet impact at Earth yesterday. Blue phi angle flip ahead of the coronal hole stream we're expecting just before that CME arrives. Quick stepping stone from the sun to Earth. Almost missed this one this week. If I'd been a bit sharper, this would have made it in with the other uncertainty fixes needed to climate models, which we went over just a few days ago. Add this one as one more. Up next is some eye candy that requires two foundations, and it's truly an Easter egg for veteran observers. If you recall our examination of the Musca filament, aka the Musca electric sheet, with perpendicular fields and which was our best candidate to locate small scale currents, we had not quite envisioned it being like the flows and eddies you see in the ocean, but perhaps something quite close, indicating the dynamic properties of the current. And I've got to admit, it's a little closer looking to the ocean currents than I would have imagined. These are individual currents in the Musca filament in space, aka the Musca sheet. Bet money, the eddy circles are where the stronger fields force rotation back feeding onto the sheet. This is definitely a current system. Folks, 0 for 2 on the launch of Black Brant 12. They're going to try again tonight starting at 8.04 p.m. Eastern Time. And again, I will be mentioning this until they actually get it launched, since the display they will put on for half the country with their plasma-driven fake auroral night glow will simulate the view when Earth's field gets too weak to stand up to the solar wind and cosmic rays, a preview of the next end of the world. Last but not least, talk about someone on the ball aiming at finding a legitimate way to model the loss from planets without magnetic fields, and it not only discusses the unfortunate planets, but scenarios of variation. We are in one now at Earth, and the effect of extreme solar wind events. He knows it applies to the early solar system and exoplanets. I wonder if he knows how critical these numbers will be in our very near future. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about Earth's ongoing shift with our 12,000-year disaster cycle playlist, Link is below this video and at our channel homepage. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.